We're traveling to the remote northeast corner of Montana to witness the first airport tests of one of these evolving technologies. So we're going to be taxiing an airplane um, near obstacles, obstacles which may be out of the pilot's point of view. Our destination is near the town of Glasgow, and this pre-flight meeting is packed with Boeing test personnel from Puget Sound. Absolute taxi speed limit today, 30 knots. Boeing's Wesley Hebert is test director. Pilots Mike Carricker and Kerry Smith will handle the plane. Yeah, we can do that. There are young engineers here, including Amelia Wilson and Michelle Warren. Doug Christensen oversees the Eco Demonstrator program. And outside, it's beginning to snow. If things start getting bad, we'll, it is a taxi test. We've talked about that, and uh, we're going to be okay there. A key point of this test is the lack of visibility on ramps and on taxiways at airports in bad weather and at night. Our airplane, a Boeing 777 freighter leased back from FedEx. So we also have orange cones that I put on the opposite side. Our obstacle, this inflatable pylon on the back of a Boeing fire truck. The question, can a new radar mounted on the tip of the left wing sense the pylon, which has a sheet of aluminum taped to it? And can cameras corroborate the location of the pylon? We think that we have to provide flight crews with indications of impending uh, impact. Character has spent nearly 30 years as a Boeing test pilot. He flew fighters with the Navy. So did Smith one of Boeing's newest test pilots. And from the front seat here, you can't see the wingtip, either right or left. We'll go 10 feet ahead of the wing, and that's where we'll want the pylon to be when it's on a collision point. This is the creation of SOCAS, the Surface Operations Collision Avoidance System. Even if the pylon is hit, the wing will clear the back of the fire truck with plenty of room. Despite the snow, there's still plenty of visibility. The pilots know when they have to stop because of the placement of orange cones. The measuring wheel calculates distances. We are clear of the obstacle. All right, we're moving. Amelia Wilson is managing what's happening at the collision point. We're trying to simulate situations at an airport where one aircraft might get really close to another one. Um, so if you think of the backup system on your car, it beeps at you when you get too close to something. We're trying to do the same thing, but for airplanes. The Boeing 777 is a huge aircraft. Its wingspan more than 212 feet from tip to tip. Uh, 15 knots. Yes. 15. The tests are run at different speeds. The fire truck is placed at different angles. The warning of a collision is when the radar picks up a beep or beeps in the cockpit. The brakes are applied and another measurement is taken, gauging how much warning the pilots received. Michelle Warren working with the radar. We can see all types of radar cross sections um, reflecting back to our radar from the snow, from the pavement, and what we do is filter out the highest ones that will be reflected off of the pylon and the fire truck. This is research. Um, this is our first time trying something on this big of a platform, so it's an exciting thing. Stop, 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 stop. Spot on. Stop on the cones. Uh, we didn't know which beep was to stop on. All you need is a few seconds to bring the airplane to a stop. Right. Okay, that you can tell the crew just just stop and then sort it out. You know, maybe there is a conflict, maybe there isn't, but just just stop, sort it out, and then go on your merry way. Okay, so there's no nuisance beeps following. That's good. Some tests follow the truck as it's moving. I think I'm 200 feet. Not unlike one plane taxiing ahead of the other and then pulling off. In this case, without leaving enough room. In this test, no beeps. Next test. There is promise here, but it will take years before this system becomes a finished product. Will it simply be an audible warning like a beep? Or a beep combined with an image on a dashboard display? Mike Carricker has some ideas. We would have some kind of a, a airport map on a bigger display with a very large scale, maybe only a quarter of a mile from here to there. And we'd watch these targets. And if that target looked like it was an impending target to, to the airplane, at its current velocity and current rate, we'd turn it yellow. And then when it really became a collision and you could no longer, uh, you had to take some drastic action, we'd turn it red. We're prepared, right? We bring equipment, we've got uh, staff, we've got people that can, that can test in any kind of weather.
Doug Christensen heads the Eco Demonstrator program. We don't know if it'll end up being a, a radar-based technology or camera-based. And so uh, having an Eco Demonstrator here, we can actually put both on the airplane and, and validate and understand how both of them work in snowy weather and in, uh, and in clear weather. Boeing can do this kind of testing without interference because it owns this airport, a former Air Force base. Now you can catch our story on what was once the Glasgow Air Force Base on King5.com. Now tonight at 11, we take you up aboard this very FedEx jet where Boeing is finding success in fixing an age-old problem, being able to warn passengers and crew to brace for severe unexpected turbulence. So Glenn, passenger safety is a big part of this effort, but you say that airlines really are looking into this as well, why? Right, so we were in Memphis as part of this, as you'll see as we go through this week, and I was talking to the head, the, the chairman of FedEx Express, which is the airline, basically. It's one of the air largest airlines in the country. Most people don't even think of that. They put a box and mm -hmm. send it off, it comes up, they don't think there's an airline that connects it all. Bottom line, he says, look, we want this technology to work because if something happens, yeah, you got to fix the damage, that's cost, and you got to take an airplane out of service for days at a time, maybe even longer, depending on the severity mm -hmm. of it. That costs a lot of money. So a lot of this is economic, although as you saw from our pictures earlier, mm -hmm. you know, it can affect passengers as well. Right. So, Glenn, this isn't the only airport-related story you're doing this week. No. So the big concern in this day and age for a number of years, we fixed a lot of the issues in the air, not all of them. We're going to get into more of that tomorrow night. Remember, different technology every night we're looking at here. But um, we're going to look at virtual vision and 3D runway, what's called smart view and 3D runway, to make us safer at airports on the taxiways and on the runways uh, to prevent major disasters. And there was almost one in San Francisco last year that we're going to take a look wow. at. Very interesting stuff. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn.